Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. We are looking at the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus Part 1 to find derivatives. And the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus Part 1 basically says if you have an integral function, so that's a function that is an integral, so the variable x is actually going to be the upper bound of integration. So if you have an integral from some constant c to x, and some function you're integrating f of t with respect to t, then what is that derivative? That's what the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus Part 1 is going to tell us, how to find a derivative of this integral type function. So the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus Part 1 says this derivative, f prime, is just going to be little f, the function inside, evaluated at x. So that's the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus Part 1 for finding derivatives. So let's look at Part A here. Part A, it's trying to trip us up by using w instead of x. And so let's just keep in mind that w is the variable. So what we need to do is actually um, put this in the form of this integral function. So the lower bound should be the constant. The upper bound should be the variable. So let's do that. A of w can be rewritten with a negative sign out front as integral from negative 1 to w e to the t plus t squared dt. So they tried to trip us up, but they're not going to do it. It's not going to work on us. We know how to do this. So now we can find the derivative. It just gets that extra negative out front because of uh, us wanting to swap the bounds. So now we're in this form, constant lower bound, variable upper bound, function, dt. So then all we have to do is take this function, e to the t plus t squared, and plug in this upper bound. So the derivative, a prime of w, is going to be negative e to the w plus w squared. And that's the derivative of this function. So they tried to trip us with the w and then the upper bound being the constant, but we are too good for that. All right, so the second one, the second one is actually uh, the upper bound isn't just x, it's square root of x. So h of x is actually a composition of an integral function, we'll call it capital F, of square root of x, where capital F of x would have just been integral from 1 to x, z squared over z to the 4 plus 1 dz. So we actually have a composition going on here. So h prime of x would be, by the chain rule, f prime of square root of x times the derivative of square root of x. Well, we already know what f prime will be. Basically, just take this function inside here, z squared over z to the 4 plus 1, plug in square root of x to that, and then multiply by the derivative. So this is going to be square root of x squared over square root of x to the 4 plus 1 times the derivative of square root of x. And that's going to be x over x squared plus 1 times 1 over 2 square roots of x. And now we can simplify a little bit. The square roots in this x becomes square root of x in the numerator. And then we have it. So this is going to be 1 half times square root of x over x squared plus 1. And that's our derivative. So the only thing that was different there is you had to have the chain rule because it was a composition. The, the bound was a function of x. So you just have to multiply by the derivative of that function. 
And you could imagine if it were the lower bound, you would have to put a negative out front and then do this process. So that's kind of the general idea. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, of course, always comment down below. Uh, subscribe. Don't forget to like. Thanks for watching. See you later.